Have you ever heard of uh, Joe Rogan's fart theory? Maybe if you describe mm -hmm. it, not off the top of my head. He t used to talk about this theory he had called the fart theory, where basically, like, if we didn't have smell or a nose and someone farted, you would have no clue. You would just be sitting there basking in someone's fart. Yes. Right. And most of reality is like that. We don't have senses for most of reality. Right. That's his, yeah, yeah. That's the theory. Yeah. Like, if we didn't have like how many other things are out there that we don't have, we haven't evolved senses or organs to detect. Right, and if it's it not functional, infinite. we wouldn't have evolved it. Right. I think about this with the psi phenomenon, which I'm very interested. So the very, you know, whether it's telepathy and whatnot, I'm mm, intrigued yes. by the research. Yeah. And even informally conducted a little bit of this myself, not as a formal study mm -hmm. at university, but just myself having read some of Rupert uh, Sheldrake's stuff and replicated like mm -hmm. his um, uh, telepathy. Like, can you guess who's calling you on the phone in these controlled trials? And so I... My guess is that there's something there, but my 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 hypothesis with any of that, okay, if it is real, and we got to keep our skeptical hats on, but like you're saying, like the fart theory, like we don't know what we don't know. Like we're at, we probably are aware of way less than one percent of reality. If some of these extraordinary phenomena exist, if they're real, these are just ultimately, I would say they're natural they're not supernatural because there's some level of nature we're just not aware of right i mean i think everything everything we know about science should point to that humility i mean even with like color like we see uh, this insignificant fraction of the em um yeah. you know the spectrum the of em yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and you know like sound doesn't really exist it's just our interpretation of vibrations mm -hmm. yeah, through the we, air we can't see infrared or near infrared light right so that's that's an interesting thing right and then there's like earthworms earthworms only have a very narrow amount of sensory in, uh, input so like you could like right. touch an earthworm pick it up it would never even know you're there i didn't know that wow yeah and then you get into like this i think so like daniel hoffman or um is this an uh I think it's it's Hoffman, but he's been on some podcasts, including Lex Friedman. Daniel? Talks, I think his last name is Hoffman. Mm -hmm. His first name, I'm not 100% sure on the Daniel, the D, uh, Douglas, or anyway. Okay. But his, um, I believe he's a psychologist, but very much is informed by physics. And he's really very much focused on this idea that time space itself is just this this illusion. Um, Donald, oh, I, I had the go. D right. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Dr. Hoffman, um, <laughs> Donald Hoffman. But yeah, he is a fascinating, uh, he has a fascinating account um, that he says the evidence suggests that there's every reason to think that just time and space themselves are just kind of part, are, are the GUI, are the operating, so that's the desktop, you know, and what's underneath, we have no idea. It's like ultimately the machine code, the, yes. the countless billions of on-off switches that creates this, you know, whatever the menu that we're, we think we're operating on the Mac or the, mm -hmm. or, or Windows. Um, but that we're as disconnected from whatever reality really is as mm. far as possible, even to the degree that time and space are just these kind of functional illusions. Right. So I don't know whether that's true or not, but I, I think we need to have this humility with us. <laughs> like, you know, and, you know, the physicists, I mean, they, you know, talk about the potential existence. I mean, string theor theorists talk about all these other dimensions that might exist that we're unaware of, and mm -hmm. yet who knows? Mm -hmm. um, but we should have some humility that reality might be so complex that we just... Right. Yeah, and I, I, I think that is one of the downsides in science like that I've tried, probably not, to, definitely not totally successfully, but to try to stay open. I feel like the more you learn, the more you become a learned person, the more you kind of dismiss things and like unless something's right. been shown to my sat to my satisfaction it definitely doesn't exist right that's definitely bullshit mm -hmm. whereas i think the right balance is like okay i'm not gonna confirm something or i'm not gonna but i'm also not gonna summarily dismiss it mm -hmm. so I, I i think we should kind of think more of a kind of a bayesian framework instead of saying well unless have lots of strong opinions loosely held <laughs> yeah, be open and then kind yeah, of yeah. think more, okay, like how likely, let your know, maybe you're 95% likely to think that, you know, or maybe you're 60% likely to think that the UAP phenomenon is extraterrestrial, but, yeah. you know, there's another percent that maybe these are advanced military, you know, things, you know, it's like, 
you don't have to be black or white. You could be open mm -hmm. and just say, no, we don't know. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested in more evidence, but not kind of be in this framework that until something's been completely proven, I'm, I'm saying it's complete, you know, malarkey. Yes. Because psychedelics were that way. I mean, the whole idea, I mean, when I started working psychedelics, it's like, it's, it sounded absurd to most scientists, mm -hmm. most psychiatrists, psychologists, like that experiences with psychedelics would help people overcome mm -hmm. these mental health disorders. Yeah. It sounds absurd. Because people say, oh, no, I've seen people in the ER come and tripping on too much acid. And like, that's mm -hmm. it's, it's not good for you. Like, what do you right. mean? You know? Like, right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Going to like the, the idea of um, that, like R Rupert Sheldrake and the morphic resonance stuff and mm -hmm. the idea that there's more out there that we can't perceive, you know, that exists. I mean, there's definitely there's definitely evidence of this stuff, right? Like the telepathy stuff the the stargate remote viewing stuff like there is there is scientific evidence that this stuff is real to a certain degree right it's been measured and then there's been tons of money that's been dumped on it with the united states to actually do this stuff and use it for spying or or all kinds of things so like just, i think there's a phenomenon there <clears throat> there is yeah i think there's, there's very likely i would put it at 90 whatever five plus percent that there's a real and yeah because I've, I've i've delved into the evidence and i didn't i didn't take any of this seriously until one day year probably like 20 years ago where a buddy of mine just dropped one of these telepathy papers on my desk coming down the hall i was like johnson take a look at this and i thought oh, that's got to be bullshit i would have mm -hmm. learned about it and yeah in graduate school yeah and it was just like it's just a very yeah suboptimal mm -hmm. way of thinking I think that humans used to be way more. T I think I think it's possible that we way back millions of years ago were telepathic, like straight up telepathic. And language has actually gotten in the way. Language, yeah. yeah. Language and and developing technology like the written word, like being able to offload our memory. Right. Like we probably had amazing memory. We could probably memorize everything. So we we would have had to to survive. Right. right? We've already seen it in our own lifetimes. Look at our dependence on cell phones yeah. from back when yeah, I was. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yep, that you can't remember. Then, I used to know all the phone numbers. Yeah, like now. <laughs> yeah, I think technology is just making our senses atrophy. I think that makes sense, and, and that reminds me of something I've thought about with these kind of extraordinary phenomena that may exist. That natural selection is going to work on whatever works. Yeah. So if there is whether it's something we're aware of or whether it's something more subtle, like whatever is behind the telepathy, if it's real, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's some quantum entanglement, I don't know. I don't think anyone knows, but if it can be leveraged by natural selection, as long as there's variation and there's um, selective, selective advantage. And so in other words, if this critter of whatever type if it nudged him just a tiny, tiny bit to be more likely to find that food or find the mate, had they not tapped somehow had that thing that detected the quantum entanglement? Or, I, that's a mm -hmm. random example, to be mm -hmm. clear. I do not know. Or whether it's some other dimensions that we exist in that we're not aware of, like the physicists speculate on. We're going we're gonna to use it. Mm -hmm. We're going to use whatever natural selection is going to find a way through this seemingly infinite push towards variation yeah and it's going to be co-opted so there may be that like you know if it helped us survive and you know i mean my dog does things that just right yeah dogs and i cats. can't explain right like just seems to know it seems to know when we're <laughs> about it's to to arrive at a destination she know and and even when we make stops in the way where we stop at a stop sign with slow, so it's not about slowing down but like when we get to the final death like somehow again I, it's not a controlled yeah. experiment i could be fooling right. myself well, but i'm intrigued by it like it seems like there's some some sense and yeah. like, like knowing when i'm going to come home right like going back to that fart theory like there's uh, you've 
everyone's heard the story of you walk into a house where there was a murder and like the energy's off yeah or like the just the general idea of bad energy in yeah. certain places that that could be something that could that could be part of I this think whole we thing. should be open to it something that we couldn't can't sense or like like you alluded to your dog or or, or a cat like cats always have weird senses and they can <laughs> they can smell energy on people and like sometimes dogs like people sometimes dogs don't like people for whatever reason yeah. what do we you know there what is that what sort of an invisible layer or what sort of uh, fucking energy is there that could be palpable if you had the senses that they had that were right. just completely were completely and are invisible to us you know and if you take um Rupert Sheldrake's research seriously and this isn't the morphic resonance stuff it's like the telepathy um mm. he did he published like a bunch of variations on this stuff and and found that again unless you just dismiss it all like mm. what he reported and unless he made it all up but it seems that there's a, a trait some people are good at like bowling some people are really good at it some mm. aren't even and no matter how much you practice, some people are just never going to be that great at bowl or you name the sport. Yeah. But some people really have a, that's both practicable, but also there's an innate talent. And so, and the same thing, you mentioned the Stargate, like, you know, stuff like yeah. the people that were involved with those programs, they talk, they all talk about this. Like some people, they find these superstars that seem to be really good at whatever this is. And that we're good at remote viewing, for example. Mm-hmm. And that it's not something everyone like maybe everyone mm -hmm. can do it but they're not necessarily to the same degree and not necessarily to something that's going to be functional for everyone right. but some people like like my wife seems to be one of those people that just kind of knows things mm. and she kind of has these things in her family i think it if there's yeah. something there it seems like it runs in her family like right the they're mountain people and there's like just these weird things that have happened that just these stories that just make you wonder. Yeah. And she has a sense for people like watch out for that dude. Like, and that turned out to be right. That I was just, that's interesting. Oblivious too. That's really interesting because there, there actually, there has been people who have studied and done brain scans of people who have been able to witness like paranormal phenomena or people, I think they took groups of people who witnessed paranormal stuff, whether it be ghosts or spirits or even UFOs. And they did some sort of study of them and they found out that their basal ganglia yeah, had, had what was dent, really dense with neurons or the caudate patamen. I think it's a similar. Yeah, I don't remember the particular areas, but yeah, I, I at least yeah, I was aware of this the the headline level yeah. of these findings. And I, yeah. don't, I don't remember what the significance of the basal ganglia or the caudate patamen was, but there was um, you know, that would be that would be interesting to to understand like, you know, is there any implication to that part of the brain or is there any way you can affect that part of the brain or that that part of the brain is affected by psychedelics at all, I wonder. Like is there is there a way that if in a thousand years from now, if we're like on the trajectory human beings are on right now, if the if it it is true that we had some sort of more sensory abilities in the past that we've lost now, if you extrapolate that into the future and we lose more of them because of technology and technology is like, you know, we're comp technology is compensating for all this stuff yeah. now, so we're not having it. Like, I wonder if there's a way to turn the clock back maybe with psychedelics or or that's not the right not the right way of putting it or like to to maintain some of that stuff with psychedelics yeah. well it reminds me of a title of one of mckenna's books the archaic revival i mean he very much viewed them in that sense that it's sort yeah. of like an ability to kind of you know mm -hmm. kindle something that we've lost mm -hmm. um yeah perhaps <laughs>